Well, welcome to the Josh Hall Web Design Show. Web Design Show, helping you build better websites and create a web design business that gives you freedom and a lifestyle you love. Hey, everybody! Welcome in to episode sixty-nine. In this one, we're going to be diving into what's behind a successful membership site. And my guest today is somebody who is knee-deep in a membership site. This is Karen Beatty, and she is the Senior Content Manager for SmartPassiveIncome.com. Uh, some of you may recognize that name because that is the website for Pat Flynn. Pat is an entrepreneur and somebody who I consider a mentor of mine for the past couple years now. I've gone through a lot of his courses and uh, been through a lot of his training, and I'm actually a part of his membership, and their membership is called SPI Pro, and I've learned a lot about watching what's working for them uh, to apply it to my upcoming membership. If you didn't already know, I do have a membership in the works right now, and so when I found out that Karen and the team at SPI are launching a membership, I joined, and I've been uh, really learning a lot, and I figured I would pass down what I've learned with membership sites to you. And I reached out to Karen to see if she'd be interested in coming on to talk about what they've learned with with SPI Pro, with what's worked well for them, what they've learned from. And I hope that you can use this for yourself if you are interested in having a membership site one day. But then also for those of you who are designing membership sites for clients, you can basically take everything that Karen and I talked about in this episode and you can offer it to your clients for things to watch out for and to help them really build a successful membership site. Because with a membership site, what I realized in having this conversation with Karen is that the tech side of it is only a small part of it. The rest is how you build, run, and manage a membership membership site moving forward. So really excited to share what we learned in this conversation. And I wanted to make sure you knew that if you're interested in hearing more about my membership, uh, most of my interviews here are sponsored by a course, but I'm not going to talk about a course in this one. I, w- I want to just briefly touch my membership because I am so fired up about this, guys. For those of you who have been on my email list for the membership stuff, I've kind of filled you in on what's coming, uh, but there's so much excitement around it, and I'm really excited because I'm going to open it up to the founders here soon. Uh, if you're interested in getting more details about my upcoming membership, go to joshhall.co slash membership, and there'll be a place where you can get more info. And I'll fill you in because essentially I'm bringing my tribe together. It's going to be an amazing place for community networking, exclusive trainings with myself and more direct access to me to ask questions and to just expand your network and meet some amazing people and have that community and support behind you. So if you're interested, go to joshhall.co slash membership for more. And now enjoy my really fascinating talk with Karen. And Karen's not your average Karen. She's not your let me talk to the manager Karen. Karen is super cool. She was really open about what has worked well for SPI Pro with her membership. Without further ado, let's have some fun. Karen, welcome to the show. Awesome to have you on. Yeah, I'm so excited. Thanks for inviting me. Well, I just told you before we went live, uh, I, it's kind of a selfish episode because I'm building out my membership right now and I've been doing some some R&D, some research and development And I've been interviewing and talking with some people who have memberships in place, what they've learned. And uh, you had recently interviewed me uh, and did a blog uh, series on on me for for the Smart Passive Income blog. Uh, And I was like, you know what? I'm going to reach out to you just to see if you'd be interested. And I figured, why keep it between us when I could share it with my audience? Because a lot of my audience are web designers who either are building memberships or have clients who are building memberships. So really excited to, to talk shop and help them out. Uh, before we dive in, if you, I'd love to hear from you uh, where you are and then what you do exactly with Smart Passive Income. Sure. Well, I am in Chicago, Illinois. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, so I work from Chicago. Our team is all remote, so that is great. We love having a remote team. And I'm the senior content manager. So that means I work on content such as blog posts, eBooks. Um, we help You know, whenever Pat has a new book coming out, we help him with editing and proofing and getting that all ready to go. Um, We're also starting a new podcast, so I'm working on that. So yeah, just uh, really anything content related, I am the manager. So Awesome. What's the podcast? I didn't know there was a new one in the works. Well, we're not ready to announce it yet. Okay, okay. No problem. Actually, yeah. 
So um, we're not ready to announce it, but we should in the next couple months, um, you'll probably be hearing more about it. Okay. So. All right. Fair enough. Well, I'm pumped. And yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting because I followed Pat Flynn for I think about a year and a half now. Um, I heard him, of him through my business coach and then went through his Power Up podcasting course, which was just mm -hmm. a just a huge, huge foundation piece for me to, to really kick off this podcast, which you're going to be episode 69 and it's going awesome. I just, I love doing the wow. podcast and the next big thing for me is the membership. So I've been mm -hmm. doing a lot of research on it. And what was interesting about smart passive income and what you guys are doing is you, you have this membership that I'm a part of now. I joined recently mm -hmm. for SPI pro. Um, and I'm sure we'll talk about some of the specifics, but uh, it's been really interesting. I haven't really, I haven't really dived in too much as a contributor yet. I'm more just kind of creeping, just kind of being yeah. an observer, watching how <laughs> it's flowing. Uh, yeah, yeah, just kind of looking. Um, and it's just amazing. I, I think the the idea of a membership, particularly nowadays, I, I think is more pertinent and and crucial than ever. And I think that's actually the course. The first question I have for you, Karen, is why a membership for any type of brand or website, and why now? Sure. So yeah, there are a couple different reasons for that. We had been talking about doing some kind of membership community or some kind of community really since 2018. And one reason is because people were asking Pat for that. So, you know, that was kind of on our minds. Our audience was looking for more of a community and, you know, more opportunities to network. Um, the other reason is just um as you know, because I know that you have a lot of courses, like courses make up a lot of our revenue. And, but it's not um, recurring income. Like you put together a course, you launch it. Um, you know, sometimes you put them evergreen, which is, you know, great. But, but we were just thinking about just the future of the company and, you know, how we could just make the, our revenue a little bit more stable um, you know, just have some recurring income that was coming in, you know, month to month. But really, you know, I think at the core of it is that we just thought it was time for our, our audience. They were just wanting something more. A lot of them, like, you know, have been following us for 10 years, you know, which is when Pat started um, Smart Passive Income. And, you know, they, we have a lot of great content on our blog. It's free content. If you're looking to start an uh, an online business. So there's tons of great content, but then what happens when you've already started your business, you've already taken the podcasting course and you've started your podcast, you know, you're doing the affiliate marketing, um, you know, all of these things, what do you do next? Like, how do you kind of get to the next level? So our idea around SPI pro, our membership community that we launched in July was just to have a safe place for entrepreneurs to come and ask questions, to get feedback, to get like more in-depth training because we wanted to, you know, like business fundamentals, like, okay, if, if you start like hiring a team and your business becomes a little bit more complicated, like what are those business, um, you know, like cash flow and how to price products and like, Sure. Kind of the more in-depth topics that you may need to know once you're a little bit down the road as far as an entrepreneur. Yeah. And it's funny hearing you say that, Karen, because you're echoing all the challenges that I have as a course creator now. And because I do have nine web design courses and they've been amazing. They've been life-changing for for hundreds of people. I'm, almost, I'm closing in on 700 students now. Wow. And that's it's been, amazing. It's been awesome. It's just been incredible. However, and I, I say however, because it, just what you said is the problem that I'm facing now with my students, and that is what's next. Like a lot right. of people will will go through, depending on where they are in their journey, they may go through all the courses. I have a bundle where mm -hmm. you can go through all of them, or they may just pick and choose which ones are best for them at that time. But it does, it begs the question, what next? Like they go through a course, it impacts their life, they implement the systems, and that's awesome. But what I found as a course creator is unless somebody intentionally reaches back out to me, inevitably they're going to disappear. They may not disappear exactly. right away. And I do have private Facebook groups for um, the majority of my courses. And those have kind of turned into little mini memberships. But what I've found is that number one, a lot of people will just disappear and it's no fault of their own. They're just, they're done with the course. If I'm not really engaging them to, to go further because people listen to the podcast, but I don't hear from that many people. 
And I want to hear from people. I want to bring everyone right. together. And that's exactly what my membership is. It's basically the chance to do exactly what you said, bring my entire tribe finally together and to do Q&As and to stay in touch with me and, and to be able to talk with me more directly. Because what I found is it's become, it's become very scattered and very messy with how I'm communicating with all my students right now. Mm -hmm. It's over yeah. Facebook Messenger, it's on my personal profile or my business profile, it's email, it's through course comments, it's through YouTube comments. You know, there's like all these different avenues where I'm getting so many different hits on all these different places and it's very messy, it's very scattered. I actually think, I know a membership is gonna be a lot of work, but I think it's actually gonna be um, very, very uh, stress relieving for me just to have people in one place that's more organized. And more importantly, what what you're probably getting at with SPI Pro is you bring them together. Like Yes, exactly. A, a lot of my students, I've been I've been basically a matchmaker for the past year and a half. I've been pairing students up with each other. A lot of my students mm -hmm. are collaborating, working together now, and I'm like, "Man, I want to get like everybody together and it's going to save me so much time from having to repeat the same email over and over." So, is that another big aspect yeah. too with just bringing the audience, not together with just you and the SPI team, but with each other. Yes, definitely. I mean, that's a huge part of it. In fact, when we did a survey, um, we found out that that was the number one reason people wanted to join a community was networking. And, you know, I think the life of an entrepreneur can be really lonely. <laughs> you know, like you're kind of, you know, usually you're working from home or you're alone in an office or, or, and so I think just having other entrepreneurs to, you know, um, just bounce ideas off of, get feedback from, learn from. I think that's a huge, you know, reason that we wanted to build the community. And what really solidified that was uh, last year, um, July 2019, we had our in-person conference called FlingCon. Mm. It was the first one we'd ever done. And it just like was so amazing how to see people come together. And yeah, we had a real a lot of really great teaching from Pat and like, you know, main, main events on the main stage and guest speakers. But what was really cool was just seeing the entrepreneurs come together and talk to one another in the hallways and in the lobbies and at dinner. And so that just solidified our thinking around, we just really need to find a way to keep this going mm. and to you know, do it online. And I think especially now with COVID, you know, I think it's especially important for people to have that connection and, you know, to meet, I mean, we can only meet online really right now, yeah. <laughs> but like, I think it was just really, um, you know, it was just really great timing for us to have already s planned this, you know, and then unfortunately COVID happened, but I think it just fulfilled a need that people had for just coming together and networking and just having other people to, you know, have community with. I was actually curious as an outsider for Pat Flynn and for SPI, I kind of wondered if you guys hurried up a membership because of COVID or had it been planned for a while. So it sounds like it was in the works and then it was uh, definitely yeah. in the works. Yeah, we had yeah. <clears throat> It was yeah. definitely in the works. We had actually, the end of last year, our plan for 2020 was to put together the community, SPI Pro, and then launch it at this year's FlingCon. Oh, okay. So that was our plan. But then we had to cancel FlingCon, of course, because we couldn't, you know, no one could travel to San Diego and we couldn't have an in-person conference. Um, so yeah, that was our plan. We had originally plan to launch it at FlynnCon. We ended up going ahead and launching it in July as well. We just had to, you know, change our launch plan a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, we, it was it, it had been in the works for a while. Yeah. And again, I, I definitely I, I understand a lot of what you're saying with the, the reasons why. And I think most of my audience is web designers. We already feel this because we've been remote workers. Most of my followers are working from home or in remote spots. So we're used to doing yeah. things remotely. Mm -hmm. But in the, in the web design realm, we have word camps and meetups and a lot of things that were in person. I always tried to go to a meetup every, a couple times a year at least, mm -hmm. and those were invaluable. So now it's really difficult. I personally think there's no better time for any industry to have online communities because it is, it's crucial because it gets lonely working from home. A lot of people aren't used to working online alone. So it's like culture shock. 
I, right, I have some exactly. students. Yeah, I have some students coming from way like vastly different industries. So I really wanted to, on my end, I wanted to really bring everyone together and have this community. One of the next questions I have for you, and it's kind of a kind of playing devil's advocate on this one, which is why a premium membership over like a free Facebook group or just something you know like a free community or something <clears throat> like that. Well, we do have a community on Facebook that is pretty active. Um, I'm I'm not sure how many members we have in that community right now. But there are a couple issues with that. First of all, Facebook as a platform is a little bit difficult just because, you know, you have your just general news feed. So when someone posts something, it's just kind of this linear news feed that's kind of hard to join the conversation if you um, kind of come in and out. So that was one thing, just Facebook as a platform itself. The other thing is um, we wanted people who were, um, and you know, we welcome anyone, any entrepreneur, whatever level they are, wherever they're at on their journey, like beginners, you know, if you're doing it as a side gig, that's great. But we wanted people who were just really committed to growing and um, being active in the community and uh, wanting to get to the next level. And I think when you have a, f a free platform or a free community, you get a lot of people who maybe come in and out, maybe aren't that serious or just kind of curious, which is fine, um, you know, and we welcome everyone into the Facebook community. But we just thought that there was a need for a different level of community where people were definitely committed to growing and um, interacting with one another and, you know, growing their businesses. Yeah, and I think but with a membership, even if it's a very low cost membership, I mean, some people do memberships for like a dollar just to weed out the people who don't want to pay a thing, which <laughs> yeah. that's the trick. Like you, like I, I have a, a Facebook group for web designers. It's free. It's 22,000 people now. So Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing, but <laughs> it's 22,000 people in a free place, which has become very difficult. Now, I'm not going to yeah. close the group down, but this membership is completely different. That is basically a forum now it's basically tech issues. Like if you have questions about certain tools or something like that, I'm going to keep that open. It's a great place to test the waters with some of the tools I use. And, and I've tried to run it as best as I could, but with 22,000 people, you get some bad seeds in there, no matter what kind of right. rules and strict and guidelines we have. Like we, we actually have a really high, um, denial rate. We're at almost 50% denial rate. Wow. Um, wow. Because just in web design, you get a lot of people all over the world who are just wanting to join something for free. And I'm like, listen, if you can't even fill out the questions, I we're not going to let you in the group. If you know, you got to at, least, at yeah. least fill out the questions. I have no idea what you're going to be like. Um, but it's been an issue. And that is the problem. It's, it's you know, the, the free groups mm -hmm. attract people who may not be serious about their business. And also, when I found that when you pay for something, even if it's a small charge, you're more invested. It auto makes exactly. it automatically makes you as a member want to contribute and get more out of it because look, I'm paying to be here. I'm gonna I want to do this thing. Uh, and the other big problem you mentioned it with Facebook, you don't own anything. You're at the mercy of Facebook. Mm -hmm. And even with a you know, with a boosted post or something like that, you'll get maybe what five ten percent of the people see it uh, if you're lucky. Like in a, in yeah. a big group a very small percentage. So, so with a membership platform, it's, it's huge because everyone's going to see it. You can control the variables. Was that a big thing for you guys as well? You just wanted to have full control of, you know, bringing the community together. Exactly. Yeah. There are a lot of factors. I mean, when we envisioned what we wanted the community to be, um, Matt Gartland, our C co-CEO, uh, he and, and Pat are co-CEOs now, hmm. but we had, uh, about, he wrote down about six different things that we really wanted in the community. Um, you know, one of course was community. <laughs> uh, one was uh, purposeful communications. And mm. um, that meant something similar to Slack where you could have uh, different channels, um, different ways of organizing the information instead of just a straight news feed. Um, private networking such as LinkedIn, like something similar to LinkedIn. Um, a knowledge base um, similar to Help Scout. And he, as you can tell, he used a lot of these tech platforms as kind of his inspiration. He was like, I want something like this and this and this. Um, then exclusive access and advice. So, you know, you're paying a, 
a membership fee, but you're also getting access to, you know, more access to Pat, um, more access to our team, uh, access to experts, that type of thing, um, enriched content, which we have free workshops that we do within the community. We have free eBooks um, that we have created exclusively for the community. We have um, events such as, um, you know, Pat holds these ask AMAs, Ask Me Anything events. Mm -hmm. So that has been really fun. We have um, experts that come on like from our platform par partners, su such as ConvertKit or Teachable to do like little trainings um, within the community. So there's a lot of like really enriched content that you can get for free. Um, and then we also have exclusive discounts, um, you know, from a lot of our partners as well. So there's a lot of, so you're paying a monthly fee, but it's, or a yearly fee, whichever you choose, but you're getting a lot of free content that you wouldn't get otherwise. Yeah. And a lot of just, yeah, a lot of like premium exclusive stuff that you wouldn't get as somebody on the outside just for free. And then I think more of everything you said right there, it's the purposeful content, like those purposeful conversations. Uh, that was a big thing for me too. And I know we'll talk about the platform that we're both using because I'm using what you guys are using with SBI mm -hmm. Pro. Oh, great. Yeah. But I thought the exact same thing. I was like, okay, I'm getting Facebook messages and emails randomly from people, my students who... I'm basically coaching people for free right now. Um, and I just, I know right now at my level, it's okay. But I know here pretty soon, I'm not going to be able to manage it. The exactly. Way it is. Right. Um, so I, I like, I like that aspect. I like the idea of Facebook groups for my courses in particular. However, it was the same thing we just went over. No control. It's spotty and, and buggy at best, Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. And then you're just, members aren't going to see everything. Uh, and then the other thing was, I, I like the idea of like the Slack-based channels uh, and I know my team, we use Basecamp, and I really like the idea of having certain threads to where when you're in that thread, you're in that space. Like, I'm, exactly. in, I'm in this zone, you know? It's much different than just a Facebook thread where, you know, you could just see something while you're eating dinner with your family and you see something and, you know, you're just not in that space. So the idea of all that together was huge. And I, I have been kind of toiling, I had been looking through all these different platforms and when I found out you guys were using one called Circle, circle.so, I joined the community because I wanted to be a part of the community, but I also was, you know, more really looking forward to just kind of seeing what's worked because everything that you've done, I've, I basically copied the SPI uh, playbook and it's working out awesome. Um, oh, great. And everything that you just said from the different threads, the different chats, the more direct access to me, exclusive, like relevant, timely trainings then. Um, connection and networking with really great people. Like all those aspects are what I'm bringing in my community. But the trick was what platform to choose. Uh, exactly. So I, I did, I went with Circle and I'm setting it up right now and I love it. I'm the only member right now because I'm building it out, but I just like being inside Circle. I, I tried some other ones out and I felt like they were just clunky and they were just, there was just so much, um, so many different things that were going on. I just, I liked how Circle was very conversation based. It is kind of a mix of Slack and Facebook groups to me. Right. Uh, but with right. that, like LinkedIn, more professional network, personal, private kind of network aspect to it. Um, so that's kind of why I went with Circle. Why did you guys go with Circle? Is it the same, same sure. thing or was there anything <laughs> else that really stuck out to you? Yeah. So uh, when we first, you know, started toying with this idea of a membership community, we, we looked at a lot of different platforms and, um, you know, there's Mighty Networks, which has been around forever. Um, and, you know, there, I think there's one called Podia. Um, so we were looking at different platforms, but in the meantime, um, you know, Matt was really looking for one that really fit our vision. We didn't want to have to fit our vision into their platform, like, a, you know, someone's platform. So, um, so in the meantime, he was talking with um, some people at Teachable, which we have a really close relationship with because we host all of our courses on Teachable and they're just a really great partner. And he was um, talking with Ankur, who is the CEO and founder of, of Teachable. And so they were talking about this idea and, you know, Matt was thinking, well, maybe Teachable could, you know, create something, but that wasn't, you know, that just wasn't a, a really good fit. But then in the meantime, um, Ankur was t telling Matt about a couple of guys who had, used to work at Teachable who were starting Circle SO. 
And, you know, the whole idea for Circle was to help creators, you know, have a platform for community. And they were doing some interesting things like, um, you know, like the, the Slack-like channels. Um, you're really able to create your space the way you want it. Yeah. Um, instead of just having to fit your idea into a, you know, a template. Um, so, so Matt started talking with them even before they launched the product. And so when he found out what they were doing, uh, he was, he was all in, he was like, yeah, this is exactly what we need. And so, so yeah, it was really just out of beta, right? This in the summer. Yeah, Yeah. it was, this was like, um, well, he started talking with them way back in January. Okay. Yeah. And so they had just kind of a, you know, uh, a prototype, um, put together and he was really impressed with that. And then he went back and visited them again and they had built it out even more. And so, so actually he and, and Pat are now advisors for circle. And so they're able to have some input on like, Oh, we think this would be really great for, you know, any, you know, new things or new features that they could offer on the platform. But yeah, and then it's also white label, so you can have your uh, community branded the way you want. Um, so yeah, there were just a lot of, it's also, I think, Circle, like with Mighty Networks, you can go into Mighty Networks and like create a website and actually um, put your courses on that site in order to, you know, sell your courses right on Mighty mm-hmm. Networks. and. So it's kind of an all-in-one platform, but we really didn't need that because we have Teachable for our courses and we yeah. didn't want to have, you know, we wouldn't move them to a different platform. Um, we already have, you know, a payment platform set up. So with Circle, you can connect all of those various platforms to your community in Circle. Yeah, it's funny. I'm, I'm nodding my head because uh, same thing. I'm basically just a step behind SPI. Like, I already have yeah. my courses set up. I've got that, you know, all set. So the one I was trying out before Circle, the platform was very similar. It was an all-in-one, which I liked some aspects of that because it was, you know, fairly easy to integrate a lot of different things together. However, there was all this stuff for landing pages and sales stuff and courses. And I'm like, I don't need any of that. Like I already have my website. I've already got all that in place. I just need the community aspect right. of it. And yeah, I, I really... I liked Circle. I liked, I just thought it w- looked very minimalistic and clean. And it was kind of like an open slate that you could add your own like flair to, like you're saying. Uh, one thing for me too is because I did find now, I think I listened to the podcast episode where Pat talked about being an advisor for Circle. And I'm like, you know what? If these guys and some other really good folks are behind this brand new product of Circle, I feel like it's going, you know, it's just, it's going up. There's, it's, I know mm-hmm. it's in really good hands and it's, we're at the, the cusp of something really cool. I feel like I, it's, it's going to be worth investing in. And funny story, um, I ended up making a connection with Jay Klaus. Uh, his podcast uh, scheduler reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in having him on the podcast. He was actually just a couple episodes before you. Uh, and I was like, okay, freelancing school. And then I found out he's in Columbus, Ohio. I was like, oh, that's cool, local guy. So yeah, we reached out. We connected and I got him on the podcast. And um, when I was checking out Circle, I went to the bottom of their landing page and there's Jay Klaus. So it was like yeah. <laughs> a crazy, like small digital world. And then I reached out to Jay and I was like, dude, I saw you on Circle. I'm actually looking into Circle. And he's like, dude, I just helped out SPI Pro set Circle up. And I saw that you got featured on the SPI blog by Karen. So it was like a crazy small <laughs> digital world all at once. Uh, but that kind of sealed the deal for me. That was like, all right, you know what? I feel like this is a platform. And just as a quick lesson for my students and, and audience who are listening, when you're deciding on a platform, it is a really big deal. It's a really important decision because it's something that's ideally going to last a long time. Uh, and mm-hmm. I think I think the value in what we're talking about, Karen, is we're diving into like why it was so important to make this decision and how to make it because we had all these needs. We identified what we needed, which for my web designers listening, you can just basically copy this entire conversation and create like a, a list of, you know, what your clients need and then decide what platform is going to be best out of the biggest needs. Because had I had not, you know, had courses, if I didn't have a website, I may have chosen an all in one type of solution, right. but I yep. had that all set up. So uh, again, there's a lot of other platforms and I use WordPress. So there's a ton of really good plugins. I've used MemberPress before, 
on a client site. We've done some other forum based stuff, but uh, this one community driven, I, I think was huge. And a cool thing for me and what I've told the people who are really interested in my membership is since I'm a member of SPI Pro, I'm learning what's working for you guys and kind of passing that on to my membership. So it's it's really yeah, exciting. It's really exciting times. We're still we're, we're we're still figuring out what's working and what's not working. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk so, about that. Yeah, because I, yeah. I and I'm telling everybody it's going to evolve. Like it's going to start out fairly simple at the start. Like I have all of the threads set up. I have you know we're going to do monthly trainings and Q and A's with me. Um, but it's going to evolve. We're probably going to expand on more. Part of me, I, I tend to like just put too much on my plate all at once. So I want to do challenges. I want to do a buck club, but. I realize I've got to take it one step at a time. I've got to get the foundation set and bring my my founders in first, my my early adopters, my tribe, and then really get it set up and then we'll evolve it. But yeah, what's what do you feel like are something that's worked and some things that maybe haven't worked so well so far? Sure. And just to be clear, we have we have a, you know, 10 to 12 person team doing all of this. So so yeah, um, if you're one person trying to set up the membership community, it might look a little different. But uh, so we knew that networking would be a really big um, value. So we um, do a lot of meetups. So we have, as soon as you join as a new member, you can join a new member meetup. I don't know if you've done that yet, Josh. I haven't, no, um, but I, yeah, I saw and, it. Because it's location-based so, now too, right? Yeah, well, so we, we also, yes. So we have new member meetups and those are just a lot of fun. We just, you know, everyone talks about, you know, what their business is doing, where they are. It's just pretty casual, but those are just really fun. And some people come more than once. So um, just to meet as many people as they can. We also have subject-based meetups. So if you're interested in podcasting, we'll have a podcasting meetup. So you can talk about podcasting. And then we've recently rolled out mastermind groups. So we have, um, so you filled out a little application about what you're interested in, um, what, how many times a week you would like to meet, you know, just kind of all information about what you would want from a mastermind group. And then we did matchmaking. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, based on, you know, some based on location, um, but you know, otherwise you're, you know, like what you're interested in and how many times a week you wanted to meet. So that is really exciting. People are really excited about the mastermind groups. Um, we also, like you mentioned, we have a book club so people can um, meet. We, we read a book once a month on a topic and then we come together twice a month to discuss it. So that's been really great. Um, so those are just some of the opportunities where people can just get together and meet and get to know each other and network. Gotcha. Yeah. So the networking, the communication, the connection, those are the things that sounds like they're working really well. Uh, over the past couple months, because I know it's only been a, a few months since the membership's been up, have you seen any red flags or things that you realize haven't worked well or you decided to cut out initially? Anything like that? Um, not that I can think of. We do. We did set up, you know, before we launched, we set up a lot of the different channels, um, uh, you know, like similar to what you see in Slack. And some of those we've noticed haven't been getting much action. So we've talked about maybe, okay, well, maybe we need to simplify the number of channels that we have. So we have talked about that. Um, that side overall, note, I'm, I'm glad to hear that because I started doing the same thing. I started setting up a bunch of channels and I was like, you know what? I'm going to start out with just one forum and then I'm going to wait till it gets to like, 20 or 30 or 40 channels and then break that out because I feel like yeah. it's going to give me a good idea. I would imagine same for you guys. You probably have a good idea of what's popular, what's needed, and then kind of figure out how to organize all that accordingly. Yeah. And like you said, it's evolving. Like, you know, even before we launched, we had, we went through different iterations of like, okay, what are the channels going to be? What are we going to, you know, what features are we going to have? And we just kind of edited that down as you know, before we launched, and now we're just evolving that even more. We've added some channels and deleted some, you know, just based on what people are are engaging with. What's been the difference between the type of people in the membership versus the, some of the free groups that are out there for SPI? Um, we're finding that people are just really hungry for content and connection. Hmm. So it's a very active community. Um, you know, we, we feel like just the leveling of engagement 
is just a lot higher. You know, we have monthly challenges um, based on different things. Like we're going to have a challenge where people can pitch their idea and we're going to call it um, Smart Tank instead of Shark Tank. Yeah, nice. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and just the number of people who get involved in events like that um, is just really, has really been fun to see. Yeah, it is. What a great opportunity to, to particularly, I think, for people who are really shy like as a web designer, if they join my free group, it's 22,000 people to, to put your work out there, to ask for feedback. That's like, it's the main reason I set that group up was to have a community for feedback, but I realize it's just different now. It's kind of one reason I wanted to have this community because I feel like it's a safe place to learn exactly. and to grow. And I think you actually use it on your landing page, right? It really is kind of like a safe place for entrepreneurs to to like qualified people to really help each other out and to help, you know, exactly. this, this very lonely journey often in entrepreneurship. Yeah. Yeah. And we are keeping it pretty small. Um, you know, uh, considering we have about a little over 500 members right now. And we feel like that's just a really nice size to start with. We're kind of still considering ourselves in the beta stage. So we're kind of, you know, taking these 500 members and figuring out what works and what doesn't work. But yeah, we definitely want it to be a safe place so where people can ask questions and get feedback and just support one another. Yeah. Have you found that it's been a really good, um, I hate to say sales place, but I imagine it has really opened the door for a bunch of other opportunities for what you guys are doing with Smart Passive Income and also Pat's courses. Like somebody gets in there and they took one of Pat's courses and then they see a bunch of people talking about how this other course really helped them, they're likely going to want to buy the other course. Like, have you found that it's really opened up a lot more opportunities like that? Um, you know, I don't know that we have any metrics around that yet as far as people, you know, buying courses from, you know, just from being in SPI Pro. I do, we are offering a lot of, we started um, workshops, which are kind of uh, in between a webinar and a course. <laughs> so they're, they're live workshops that we record and then um, people within SPI Pro can just get it for free. So, um, so there's just a lot of opportunity for the members to have free content. Um, but I don't know uh, if it has resulted in more course sales. Gotcha. I'm not sure we have any metrics on that yet anyway. Gotcha. Yeah. Something I'm going to try to track as best as I can, just because I, I know a lot of people are, because I'm doing the same thing, workshops and trainings, and I know inevitably those are going to lead to to some other stuff but i think the really cool thing too for the the members is a membership is a perfect place to fill in the gaps between courses like exactly I, i've got nine web design courses they cover pretty much everything you need to know for somebody it's like well, almost like a little mini university you can go through every course and be ready to get clients and build your websites but there are a lot of little things that i want to continue to train on that are in and around those topics but they don't really fit in those topics. Like I, I really yeah. want to do some trainings about like advanced things with Google analytics, but that doesn't really fit in with any of my courses exactly. So I, I know for me, it's going to be the perfect, like the glue that kind of pieces everything together and really holds exactly. my community together. And I think for me, I, yeah. I, I know you guys have a heart for the people at the core of this too. Like I don't want my students to disappear. I want to continue to oversee them and help them, but I've got to do it in a more organized way for my, exactly. san for my sanity. And I know everyone wants yeah, me I to stay, you know, healthy and, and to do good content, but at some point I'm almost catching it before it gets out of control. I feel like. Right. And I think within a membership community, people help one another. Mm -hmm. So the burden isn't going to be just on you because you can't, you know, you can't help that many people. You just don't have enough time in the day. And so we're finding an SPI pro that people are finding each other and helping each other out. Like if somebody has a question, you know, somebody will pop into the channel and answer it before we can even get there. And so there's just a lot of that type of thing going on. And it, that's really fun to see. Yeah. That is a huge aspect for sure. Yeah. Now and we've also talked about just like providing like mentorship relationships as well. Like if somebody needs help with like, finances, you know, business finances, mm -hmm. like being able to hook them up with some kind of mentor um, within the community that would be able to help them. Well, I'll throw my hand up if if there's anything that you've seen that I've, you know, been doing that would help the community. I'd be, I'd love to do some sort of like 
mentor segment or something, particularly with podcasting. Oh yeah, sure. I've learned yeah. so much this year and it's been awesome. It's actually just over a year. I launched, uh, I launched officially on November 4th uh, of 2019. So uh, at the time of wow, recording this, we're right yeah. at a year. So, um, so yeah, I, yeah, really excited. Um, I'm curious, well, I'm sure everybody is price point. How did mm-hmm. you guys decide what the price point was going to be? Because w- I, what's really interesting is with your audience, it's very vast. Like you've got people who are just starting out who probably aren't making barely anything, but then you've got people in the high six figures and seven figures. So I imagine that was kind of hard to figure out, you know, what's going to be the best fit. I know for me, I'm still just about to solidify my pricing and I'm trying to keep it low enough to where somebody earlier in their journey can join, but it's definitely going to weed out the people who aren't willing to invest anything. But at the same point, I want it to be a place where I can help the people who are getting into six figures and higher because I want to coach them on a, on a higher level as well. So uh, it's a little easier for me, I think, because most web designers are making between the 10 to 25,000 range, but then the more advanced range are 50 to six figures. Sure. Um, For you guys, though, it's much more drastic. How did you guys figure out price point? Sure. Um, well, Matt is Matt, our CEO is a he's kind of the pricing guru. <laughs> in fact, he's working on a workshop called Pricing for Profit. So um, mm. that will be coming out in a few weeks. But we, you know, I think we just did a lot of research, you know, on how other membership communities were priced. Um, and then, you know, we wanted to start out with a price point where um, you know, you know, most people would feel like they would be able to um, you know, be able to do it, you know, even if they weren't making six figures or a million bucks or whatever. So that's where we started. It's, um, $49 a month or four ninety nine, four hundred ninety nine dollars a year. So you can choose whether you want to pay monthly or yearly. Um, and that being said, you know, in the future we may end up like, you know, doing some different levels. So, you know, there might be a higher price point for, you know, just getting more access or more features if you are, you know, wanting that. Um, so that, you know, that's maybe something we do in the future as well. But yeah, same here. I was, I, I think initially I was going to do different tiers, but I think what I'm going to do is just have a, a basic membership price, but then founding uh, members will get a big discount that will, you know, we'll, we'll grandfather them and we'll stay with that discount. But then I may open up some different tiers eventually. I want to kind of see how it goes, kind of do it as a phased approach, see how the first few months go with it, and then maybe open up a lower tier for the people who you know want to join, but you know maybe they don't have the budget. But then also have a higher tier for people who want more ac- direct access to me, because that's the big thing. Is I need, I realize I need to protect my time since I don't have a big team with this. Like you said, you guys have a dozen people involved. It's just me right now, so I'm keeping it at a very uh, stable kind of position and a stable pace Mm -hmm. to make Mm -hmm. sure. uh, And that's why I like the idea of kind of taking a phased approach, which I'm all about taking phased approach anyway. I've told my clients for years, when you build a big website, just do it in phases. Phase one can be this and then see how it goes, make sure it works out. Then we can do phase two. And I think with a membership site for anyone who's building membership sites for clients, I think it's really important for them to, uh, to adopt that idea. I would actually say with any membership site, it has to be like that, right? Because it's not just something that is like you're a product, you're, it's a community. So you're going to hear from people and evolve with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, um, something you have, you know, that's one reason we wanted to start kind of small, you know, let's just kind of see how this goes and work out any tweaks before we invite, you know, thousands of people in whatever. But I, I think too, um, you know, it is, you have to keep in mind a membership community is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like you just put the plot, you know, you just invite people in and then, you know, it's kind of hands off. It's not like that at all. It is, you know, we're in there, our team is in there every day, you know, engaging with the community, answering questions, you know, posting, you know, messages. Um, We just hired a community manager. Um, Her name is Jillian Bembao and she's just terrific. She has a lot of experience in communities. So she is, taking over a lot of that, but, you know, all of us are still very involved in, um, the community. So, so yeah, I think if you're a solopreneur starting a membership community, I think it's definitely, you know, start small, just figure out what you can handle. 
Um, and that, you know, um, you know, maybe you just invite 20 or 50 people in at first and yeah. see how that goes. And can you handle that? And maybe, um, you know, maybe you can hire a community manager at some point or have someone within the community, you know, volunteer to help, you know, help manage, uh, you know, something like that. But I definitely think having, like you said, a phased approach is definitely a smart idea. Yeah. And you said it as a solopreneur, I like, I'm very aware and prepared for how much work it's going to be. Um, so it's why same thing. I'm going to start small. I did an invite for people who are interested in the membership. And I have like a hundred and I think 70 some people on that list who just want to find out more. And that's going to be the core group that I offer it to at first. Like they're going to, you know, they're going to come in and I'm going to get a feel for how to manage it really well moving forward before I do like a big push, you know, and yeah. big advertising push. And I also don't want to have a big push and there'd be like no content in the membership. Exactly. So I want it to be already running. Uh, but the cool thing about bringing like a core group of people is they already know, like, and trust you. They're already the Eagles that are ready to fly and do this thing. So they're going to likely be much more engaged than having a bunch of random people yeah. who, who don't know you. So exactly. And I think you too have to figure out what's going to bring, keep people coming back, mm -hmm. you know, like, that's why we have monthly challenges. You know, we have events like Ask Me Anything events with Pat and we have the monthly book club, like having those kind of regular events that will keep people coming back. Um, if they don't see that there's like new content or there's not a lot of activity going on in the community, then they're not likely to log in every day. Yeah. Um, so it's just kind of figuring out what those things are that will keep people coming back. Yeah, that's great. Well, that's a good reminder for me and for anyone doing membership sites or even their clients just to to keep a pulse on what's working and then do be prepared for the amount of work. I know that's like, I think being a web designer and having done web design for a decade and growing my business, I knew that every project was going to be 10 times more work than I thought it was originally going to be. So when I was getting ready to do my podcast, I knew how much work it was going to be. But what's funny is a year in, I don't feel burned out. I feel more passionate and pumped up than ever. Uh, but it's because I knew it was going to be a shit ton of work. And I also knew that I wanted to follow a proven path, which is why I went through Pat's course, the power up podcasting course. So, sure. uh, that's, you know, I was very aware that it was going to be a lot of work because a lot, that's what happens when I think a lot of people get started on something and then they burn out or it just drops three months or six months down the road. It's because they didn't anticipate how much work it's actually going to be. I think that's a problem with a lot of people just in general who start their businesses. They just don't, right? Because you know, yeah. a lot of people on the outside, family and friends and you know, people around will be like, oh, you just design websites? That must be easy and fun. Like, well, there's a, there's a little more to it than that. Or <laughs> like, oh, you just, you know, you made an online course and you sell it to people. That must be cool. You know, you must just sit around all day and not do much. It's, it's acting a little different than that. So yeah, uh, I think being aware that it's going to be a lot of work and then trying to prepare. I'm, I'm trying to prepare as best I can, but I know there's going to be surprises and there's going to be some things that pop up. So I'm like, I'm almost leaving room in my schedule to, uh, to be able to handle the unexpected. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, you know, I think the, the flip side of that is you really get to be in contact with your audience and your community. And it's like, for us, it's just been really fun to actually get to see faces of people who have been following mm. SPI for years. And maybe we've communicated, you know, uh, through email or something, but we actually get to, you know, see them on a Zoom call and chat with them. And so it's, it's a really rewarding experience. Like once, once you launch it and, you know, you just see people interacting and, and just building community. It's really fun. Well, you got me fired up, Karen. I'm really excited because <laughs> that's exactly how I feel about it. It's, you know, the recurring income, the stability will be awesome. Of course, from a, from a financial standpoint, that's a big pro, but I think even more so for me, it's that same thing. Like, like I said, I have a lot of students who are great and they come in, but if I don't, like, I'm at the point now where I can't remember to like reach out to a student from three months ago, they, they'd have to reach out to me and then I'm going to engage with them. Like I'm, I want to stay in touch with people. And I know what's been really cool. And I think the really cool thing about a membership is you get that personality other than just an email address. Like when somebody purchases exactly. a course, it's awesome. It's great. <clears throat> but all I see is an email. I don't know this person. I don't know anything about them. Don't know anything about their business. So what I've been doing, because I can manage this right now is everybody who joins a course, I send a personalized quick loom video. I just say, Hey, welcome to the course. Awesome to have you in. I've 
excited to help you. I want to hear about your business. Just shoot me a, a quick video or a quick note, and I'll give you some insights to help you get to the next level. It doesn't take much time. I batch record those, and it's been like the most amazing ROI for me because people are blown away that I took the time to send a video, yeah. but they also, it piques their interest and more. But then for me, what's been really cool is I don't just see an email. I see a real person and they tell me their story. Like I just heard recently from uh, shout out Matthew, an airline pilot who's you know learning web design on the side. Uh, I was all kinds of people from different countries. I'm like, I'm seeing them and I'm getting a feel for them and their story and their businesses. And I think it kind of levels you as a uh, creator because you can get very business minded and lose the human touch of it. But when, when you see an order come through and see an email, it doesn't impact, it doesn't impact you the way when somebody sends you a video and you're like, you're making a big difference in my life. I just lost my job and now I'm building my business. Like that's, that's the really exciting piece. And I think for, as the membership, I'm really excited to hear from more people, to, mm-hmm. which anyone can send me a video anyway. I'd love to see it. But to be able to have this on a regular basis and then to see and track the growth, that's what I'm just, I'm really fired up about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this has been awesome, Karen. Thanks so much for your time and for, for dishing out what's working for SPI Pro. I think we covered you know, where you guys were at as a business, but then we talked about really the need for the membership and then also just the need for your community. I think that's huge for anybody. Um, deciding on the platform, we talked about why we both ended up going with Circle and why that's so important. It really is. It's a it's a huge step because migrating and moving platforms is not something you want to do exactly. from a, from a membership. That's a, that's even that's yeah. like it's a hundred times more complex than it, just a website. So that's huge. And then we talked about you know really what is working well with the community, maybe where you need to pivot, knowing it's going to evolve. Um, keeping tabs on your members and really planning out the fact that it's going to be more work. And I think going over, you know, some of the success stories already and hearing how it's impacted members, but then impacted you guys as well. And I'm, I'm, I'm really fired up for mine. So, uh, yeah. yeah, this has been great. This, this pumps me up. Thanks so much for sharing everything you've learned so far. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for you to get yours up and running. And I definitely think it's going to be a rewarding experience and, um, yeah, it's been great to chat. Awesome, Karen. Well, hey, do you actually, do you have like a final thought for anyone who's considering doing a membership or maybe even if they're working with their clients and they just want to pass on some information? Do you have just like a final thought that would would help them just from the get-go? Yeah, I definitely think that it is a worthwhile endeavor. I think people are craving community right now. I mean, not just because of COVID, but, you know, just everything going on in the world. I think we're craving community and craving just being in connection with people who have the same passions. So I think it's really serving your audience if you put together a membership community. And I think it will also be fulfilling for you as well. Um, Just knowing that you're doing something really great for your audience and helping them connect and get to the next level in their business. Well said. Perfectly said. I love that. What a great ending thought. Uh, Where can my audience go to find out more about you and SPI? Sure. So um, smart passive in, smartpassiveincome.com. And if you want to learn more about SPI Pro, you can go to smartpassiveincome.com forward slash pro. And that will give you all the information you need. And um, you know, if you want to apply to become a member, there's the application um, that you can go into on that page. So, so yeah, that's, um, that's where you can find us. Awesome. Yeah. And I'll link that in the show notes. And yeah, I was I was hoping I'd make it through. I imagine I just just got by the filters. So I was excited to get the uh, get the approval to join recently. <laughs> awesome. Now we were excited to let you in, Josh. We're excited. <laughs> and now you have to join the book club because I'm I, uh, I'm in charge of the book club. So Yes, I actually that's actually it's funny because a lot of my students I recommend a lot of books and I'm hearing more about books almost than anything. They're like, dude, I read the book that you mentioned in your course or your podcast. And it's like changed my life. And I'm like, Oh, I want to talk about that. So it's definitely an aspect I'm going to implement pretty soon. So yeah, I'll definitely join the book club and uh, see what's up and maybe try to share some, some cool stuff. I don't, I don't do as much reading right now because I have a two year old and a 10 month old. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but man, I miss, I miss just, you know, being able to read. So maybe I'll, I'll really try to make some time for that. Uh, and then yeah, definitely look for me in the club here soon. Okay. All right. Cheers, Karen. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Bye. 
Hey guys and gals, just wanted to pop in with a couple things before you head out. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast. I would love to hear your feedback and it will also help other web designers find the show. Be sure to check out the show notes for this episode. Just go to joshhall.co, click on podcasts and search this episode number and you'll find all the links, descriptions and resources we talked about. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and you'll be notified when the next episode is live. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll catch you guys on the next episode.